On today's episode of the Cryptoverse. So there's some headlines flying around today about the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund apparently creating their own cryptocurrency, which is actually untrue. So I'd like to share some facts and then just clear this up for you in a concise package in the way that I do. So these headlines are written such that you read them and then you would be forgiven for instantly assuming that it means that the IMF um, have created some kind of cryptocurrency for global settlements of payments, right? Which would be the thing that we would expect them to do. So that would be like for settlements of payments between countries, uh, international banks, and so on. You'd expect the IMF to create a cryptocurrency for that purpose. That's something I would personally prefer the world to do with Bitcoin. Use that as the world you know, reserve, reserve and settlement currency. Um, but that's just by the way. So the fact that the IMF have um, done this, they have actually done something, which is they've set up a private blockchain which has a token on it, right? So they're, to they're calling this token the learning coin, which is specifically for use by their internal staff members. So their internal staff members can earn this learning coin by working through certain educational resources. Now, the good news is, is that these coins are given out as a result of learning about cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. So that is something. Ironically, though, if they're teaching this properly, well, these students should become aware during the learning process that the learning coin isn't actually a cryptocurrency in the truest sense, because there are two big reasons why I think that's the case. One, it's built on a private blockchain. That kind of violates the uh, my definition of a cryptocurrency. Secondly, it has no monetary value. So again, completely violates the uh, label of cryptocurrency. What these students and staff members will be able to do though, apparently, is earn these coins when they hit certain learning milestones and then redeem those learning coins for certain unspecified rewards. But um, the bit they have got right here is using a token as an incentive model to incentivize, incentivize a behavior that you want. So that's positive. So just to be clear, I'm not mocking the IMF or the World Bank doing this. I actually think it's great that they're exploring crypto by doing a real experiment, right? A real experiential experiment and involving the staff and not just doing it on a managerial level, right? So they're giving everyone what I would call a simulated experience of cryptocurrency use, earning it as the primary way of getting it, top marks for that, but also spending it by redeeming it for certain rewards. So that will get people used to the idea that you earn these things and then you redeem them, spend them for some kind of other value, right? So that's far superior to my mind than any kind of, you know, internal conference event that they may have or panel discussions or committees or blah, blah, blah. You're not gonna learn cryptocurrency that way, right? You wanna actually simulate the experience. That's what I like about this. So the goal basically here is for the IMF and the World Bank um, they want to explore and understand how blockchain technology and crypto assets work. So they're in, that's the phase they're in. They're in the sort of research and understanding phase. And then from there, once they've got their head around it and how it works and all the nuances through the experience, well, then they can perhaps start to see, based on actual experience, what the applications can be for themselves. So like, how does the World Bank and how does the International Monetary Fund see the most appropriate use for blockchain technology as per their own experiences, right? Now, to me, that's far superior, far superior than the approach that's been taken by regulators so far. Actually, in my opinion, from what I've seen personally, regulators take certain actions that completely betray their understanding. So I sit there and watch them take certain actions and I think, if these regulators had taken the time to really understand the technology first, right, rather than taking action, just wait, get a real understanding of this, um, if they did that before taking action, well, then then they would know that the actions they have taken just make absolutely no sense whatsoever, right? And anyone who knows and understands crypto and blockchain technology, just look at the regulators' actions and slap their foreheads, in my case, a considerably large one, and go, they clearly don't know what they're doing. If they did, they wouldn't be acting that way. So let me read you this quote from the IMF here. Uh, this is actually from the original Financial Times article that reported on this. So here goes the quote. Quote, the development of crypto assets and distributed ledger technology is evolving rapidly. 
as is the amount of information, both, both neutral and vested, surrounding it. This is forcing central banks, regulators, and financial institutions to recognize a growing knowledge gap between the regulators, policymakers, economists, and the technology. Close quote. So here's what I see most significant about that quote. Remember that blo the blockchain movement, it's an entirely bottom-up, grassroots initiative. So what I mean by that is the only reason that the authorities like central banks and regulators, financial institutions and governments are being forced to direct some of their attention to this technology is because regular everyday people like you and I voluntarily started using it and we gathered in such significant numbers that these authorities had to, had to, by our behavior, turn attention towards it. So all I wanted to say there is please stay the course, right? Stay the course, stick to supporting cryptocurrencies and please support creators like me who have continued to produce content without skipping a beat, despite prices and particularly interest in the crypto market plummeting by over 90%. This cannot be a fair weather movement because it's, uh, it's such a shift that people need to support it come rain or shine. So that's just what I want to say on that. Yes, we all want to get crypto rich, but I plan to doing that. I plan on doing that by making a difference. So that's really all I've got for you today. So th please like the video if you liked it. Hit the old subscribe button and the bell if you're not already subscribed. And in terms of supporting me, uh, well, you can leave a comment as well. Where's that button? Where's the comment button? That one. Leave a comment with some feedback down below. And uh, the way you can support the show is by heading over to thecryptoverse.show. If you click on support the show, you can become a patron, right? And patrons earn cryptocurrency rewards for watching the show. Uh, the top level reward right now is about 42 cents a day if you support the show at the $10 a month level, or sorry, the $15 a month level or higher. And if you support it at the $10 a month level, you'll get roughly 21 cents a day back in cryptocurrency rewards. So head over to the website. There's a trailer video that explains exactly how the cryptocurrency reward scheme works. You also get access to the private chat group and you also get uh, episodes of the Cryptoverse without adverts. So that is one bumper package of value right there for a relatively small amount of money to support the show. All right, that's all I've got for you today. I'll be back with the next episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coveney saying bye for now.